Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you again today. Welcome to Word Vibes. And we are, of course, looking at the Word is Light. And the, the, the series that we are doing right now is Perspectives. Um, we are looking at the topic freedom today. And, and um, what is God's perspective on freedom? Uh, one of the themes, of course, that comes out is in Romans 8 where it says the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death so it's a liberty from the control of the law of sin and death uh, I am yours truly Andrew Norman of course and with me today is my wife Donette Norman and it's a pleasure for us to share with you again hi <laughs> it's a pleasure being here again we are talking about freedom Mm. And who doesn't want to be free? Mm. So, Andrew, what's your take on the whole issue of freedom? Well, um, in our culture, in our sit in our situation, we have, uh, as a country, we have been independent. We say from um, Great Britain for a number of years since 1962. Uh, the reality, though, is that there's really no real freedom apart from being in a relationship with Jesus Christ because he's the one that came to set us free and um, you know I was just thinking about the, the human race and the fact that we, we just got also our forefather got himself into serious mess um, Adam the first man and he brought the whole human race into spiritual bondage so there's no there's no real the, all of our life and our existence was brought into the bondage and the captivity of darkness according to the Bible and that's just a really really sad thing but it's awesome to know that God has made a plan he has implemented a plan which has effected freedom and effectually set us free from that spiritual bondage and um, sad to say so many in the church today um, have not even accepted that um, even though initially when we met Christ or if we truly had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus if we truly had a personal experience of salvation we know that we were set free but because so much of our teaching is not in line with the New Testament we, we, we teach as if we're, f we're free but not free you know mm -hmm. it's like we're really not free so you know, we, we see ourselves as still in bondage to the law of sin and death. And that is so sad, sad, sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um as as we really look at the issue of freedom, um we are seeing that we were we were born into sin. What is sin basically? Lawlessness, it's iniquity, it's bondage, and it's the spirit of death. Mm. And this Spirit of death or iniquity basically stops the flow of love and stops the flow of life and causes us to abort awesome promises and purposes of God, not just for our individual lives, because the bondage of sin affects families, it affects mm -hmm. um, yes. nations. In fact, I have been really, really looking at the bondage of sin and, and just praying that God would open our eyes to see how dangerous sin is. Sin is worse than cancer, it is worse than AIDS, it affects, the it economy. affects every aspect of life, it is deadly. And sometimes, okay, we are afraid of AIDS, we are afraid of cancer, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are fearful that we may get a heart, a heart attack. But guess what? Sin is a spiritual disease that affects us eternally. And that's why it's so dangerous, that is why it deserves or full attention, you know. Sometimes in, in, in ministry, and I would just I would just come out about and say, "Boy, we just spend so much money on on life insurance when God has given us eternal life assurance, which is absolutely free." Wow. So we we're just pausing today to look at the, the issue of the bondage of sin, the captivity of sin, and just how we can be free because both of us here. We too were in the bondage, we were held captive, and somehow God stepped into our life and made us free. And so this is the freedom we come to declare today, the freedom we stop to share. 
And the sad thing is that even whole nations and whole um, cultures can be, uh, have been affected by this whole thing of the, the bondage that the human race fell into. And, um, you know, God wants nations freed. Um, you know, he wants, and the thing, the thing about it, so many of the writers of the New Testament, some of them were in prison when they wrote, but they were freer than the persons who were there, right. who were the soldiers. Mm -hmm. I remember one time God, um, they were beaten, Paul and, and Silas was beaten for preaching the gospel. And um, they were imprisoned and they were bleeding, bloody, everything, but that spirit of praise inside of them because their hearts were free towards God and to, they didn't blame God for what they were going through. They knew that it was a part and package of the, the gospel. That mm -hmm. suffering is a part of the gospel, and so they didn't, they weren't offended with God for allowing his great preachers, great apostles, even mm -hmm. to, be, to be beaten so bad and put in prison. They were not offended with the jailers who beat them and the people that beat them because they knew that they didn't know any better. Right. And so they were free in prison and they were there worshiping God. And the Bible says at midnight, God set them free mm -hmm. and all of the other prisoners. Mm -hmm. And to show how free they were, they could have. Most of us, if we ever were set free from prison supernaturally like that, the prison doors just opened up by the angels of God, mm -hmm. um, we would um, be bolting down the road faster than you say in bolt. Mm -hmm. But they, instead of mm -hmm. running, they stood, they stood still and they said to the jailer, you know, who was about to kill himself, mm -hmm. because they, he knew if he lost his prisoners, that's it. They said, no, we are all here. So look at the power of that freedom. Not only the freedom, but the anointing mm -hmm. that was on these men's lives. They, they convinced all the prisoners to remain with, with them and not run away. I mean, some of these prisoners may have been hardened criminals. You know, but, but the power of the gospel and the power of our freedom causes our praise to be different. Mm -hmm. when, when, our, when our freedom is real, our praise invites God to come and he says he now it's the praise of his people and I'm telling you when nation when praise is in a nation it makes a big difference you it's know in life. yeah well I, I, I you, you may be watching today and you're hearing okay freedom yes I was saved a couple of years ago I know I'm born again and yet I'm still under the bondage of sin because I I feel there are certain things that I have been towards things that I keep falling into or you may be watching and you, you were never born again and you are saying, is this for real? I know so many Christ Christians who declared freedom and they sing the song, freedom, freedom, but they are still bound. But we want to zoom in on exactly what this freedom is from the scriptures. And so we are going to be looking at Romans 8 verse 2 to kind of put some context to it. Because Jesus came to deal with freedom from the inside. And um, as I've always told my students who sometimes um, find this quote very, very, very fascinating. The heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. Jesus came to deal with the heart and he dealt with the heart. But the word of God can zoom in and show us exactly what he did. For, because for years I was set free. I knew I was born again. I had the Holy, I have the Holy Ghost. I remember the night the Lord came and just filled me up all over. But the truth about what happens can set us free. As he says, as the scripture says, we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. So we're going to zoom in on a, on a scripture to show us exactly how this freedom was enacted. Romans 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Sin brought to bear bondage, mm. inner bond bondage. Mm -hmm. We were held captive by the, the devil who held us captive at his own will. The devil held us captive, mm. right? We were the, by nature the children of wrath, the children of disobedience. Mm. Darkness. No, we were in darkness. As a matter of fact, the scripture calls us, we were once darkness. darkness. Now, God dealt with the, the law that held us captive. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus came and made us truly free. If you are born again, you were made free at salvation, 
free to, 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 to choose. Free to choose righteousness. As a matter of fact, there's a song that I'm just loving, I'm just playing. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. We were held for, for, for years, some of us were held captive to the spirit of fear and the spirit of, of Satan. But Romans 8 verse 2 is showing us that the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made us free from the law of sin and death. And I want to ask Andrew to put that in context with Romans 7 because this scripture on Romans 7 has been a point of contention for quite a number of saints who keep saying, boy, when I want to do um, good, evil is forever present. Mm -hmm. Let's put that in context with this scripture here that is showing us that salvation is God coming in and installing a new law in our flesh, a law that gives us the an innate life, yes. ability to obey God. Amen, amen. Yes, well, bless God. Um, the sad thing is so many people think that they are born again because they were baptized in a particular formula or they are a member of a particular church denomination. Um, some people tell themselves that they are born again because of these things or because they were baptized as a child. But um, the reality is that born again experience is such a personal, when, when a person is truly born again, there is a consciousness of a changed life. Is a consciousness of a changed life where your, your whole life is full of love. Um, so in Romans 7 where we see this, this um, struggle going on throughout the whole chapter, in Romans 7, 5 it tells us clearly that Paul is saying this is me before I was saved. You know, um, For he says, for when we were, were in the flesh. So that were right there is past tense in Romans 7 verse 5. So that whole chapter of Romans 7 we were in the flesh and he includes himself. Um, the motions of sin which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. So I was living in sin. My life was in bondage. I was a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. I was um, sold under sin. That's what the Bible says. Sold as a slave under sin. I'm helpless to really change. When I want to do good, I couldn't do it. The bad that I didn't want to do, that's what I ended up doing before I was born again. But we're going to take a break. We're going to come back and look further at what this freedom is. And is it is, is Romans 8 verse 2 really letting us know that God truly, truly, truly set us free from the Romans 7 experience? So welcome back again to the second segment of our discussion on freedom where we continue to look at topical issues on these word by programs um, concerning you know that are being discussed in the church um, this particular one is actually coming from our devotional um, bread for the nations but um, we were discussing the thing of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death which we saw the law of sin and death operating in chapter 7 of Romans chapter 7. Um, but we saw that there's a new law in Christ Jesus. That's where the law is found, right. in Christ Jesus. Right. So, you know, I'm a Christian. Do I have this law in me? No, God put Jesus in us first, and, and the law is in Jesus. So there's nothing can change that law. It's very powerful. It's, it's Christ is in me, and that law is in Him, right. and it keeps operating. And so... Um, he has set me free, made me free from the law of sin and death. So he is now the master of my body. My flesh is no longer a slave to sin. I don't have to fear that the flesh will sin anymore. Because our members indeed, the, in our entire flesh was circumcised to serve the living God. Andrew, I just want to pause right there because for many Christians the struggle is, okay, um, kill this body, this flesh, because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's what is driving me. Mm -hmm. Speak a little bit to what happened even inside of this law that is installed in our flesh right. and why it is not necessarily the body mm -hmm. that, that drives um, Christians right. to sin and oppose the freedom that we were brought in. 
Right, exactly. Um, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own son. So it is his son operating in these flesh now. Mm -hmm. In the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh by his death. So he became sin for us and sin was judged in, in his dying. Sin was judged. Not only that, when he saves us, he brings our heart to that place where we hate sin. He'll not save us until we want sin out of our lives. Mm -hmm. So he, by his grace and by the gospel, brings our hearts to that place where, so, so that together with him we agree for the destruction of that old sinful man. Mm -hmm. So, so there's a 100% there's a agreement with Christ, with the Spirit of Christ, in the destruction of that old man. So that old man is totally destroyed. So if that old man is totally destroyed, mm. how is it that so many Christians globally are still struggling with sin and, and not walking in the liberty of the Spirit? What is right. the problem? Well, the thing is, are we really struggling with sin or are we struggling with our own decisions? Because really, God has given us choice. That's what it is. And if, we, if we, we have that choice as a Christian, we have been set free from the law of sin and death. But God, give, God also makes us free to choose to love Him right. or not to love Him. Right. And so when that choice comes, if we make a choice to sin, you know, there are so many children that make a choice to do something to the son of their parents and they keep it secret. And they make up their minds and behind all of that decision to do wrong comes, um, you know, they get rude and, and out of order. Because now they are rebelling against that authority. So if we decide to rebel against the authority of God that is in this, in this flesh, the law, of sin, the law of the spirit of life, we can choose to rebel against that. Um, but but um, it's not that there's really any struggle with sin for a Christian. We, 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 if we choose to sin, if we secretly choose to sin in our hearts, then, then we come under the power of sin because now we, we have decided to yield our members as instruments of unrighteousness, which we can do. And God, God says, all right, I've made you free, but I want you to continue to prove that you love me mm -hmm. by abiding inside of right. that law of the spirit right. of life. Because we have here um, from our transcript, mm -hmm. um, which is available on our Facebook page, um, Word Vibes Bread for the Nations. If we abide by the law that was installed in us, that salvation, mm. through obedience to the word of God, sin no longer has dominion over us. That's right. And we would have received the Holy Spirit, as we would have received the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of grace. He comes with an innate ability, a divine enablement to, to, to help us to, to resist sin. So um, when Christians sin, we sin because we oppose our own. We right, choose because over to sin natures. because we don't have, yeah. we don't not, we can't no longer blame um, the devil. It's not the devil made me do it. Why? Greater is he who is in us mm -hmm. than he that is in the world. And let me just say this. For example, mm -hmm. another scripture that we pulled out for this transcript was Psalm 119 verse 11. It says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against God. The mm -hmm. fact is, Many of us sin because we are not hiding, and to hide the word is not to memorize it mentally. It is, it is agreeing yeah, with it yeah. to 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 Agree choose to obey the word of God. And once the word of God is in our hearts, and some of you are watching today, and you may be wondering why is it that I'm so weak? Why am, am I still in bondage? Because you have to position yourself to hear the word of the living God, mm -hmm. and it is the word of the living God, faith that comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Let me zoom in one more one more point here. Um, for years, I one, one Sunday morning I went to church years ago, and um, there there's a confession session. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit has stirred up a time of confession, and persons were, you know, really just pouring out their heart for fornication, abortion. It was just an awesome morning when the Lord was dealing. But He He He, he zoomed a scripture in my spirit. Romans 6 verse 14 mm. Romans 6 verse 14 and that scripture has stayed with me in the light of freedom it says for sin shall not have dominion over us over you for you are not under the law 
but under grace. Let, let me expand on something else right here because um, you know we we're coming back to the body and the fact that we blame our body now and say kill the flesh. The reality though is that the flesh was transformed in salvation. So right. now my body is no longer a body of sin or a body of death. Body of when I'm saved, the Bible calls it the body of Christ. Literally, this body now is the body of Christ. And I know the Bible says it's our body because Jesus is so one with us. We are so one with Christ until he calls it our body too. So he said, let us present our bodies as a living sacrifice. The only persons that can present their bodies as a living sacrifice, which is holy and acceptable unto God, is somebody who is born again. Right. Is somebody that has the law of the spirit of life working in that body so that that body only has a taste for righteousness and holiness. That body has nothing in it that one sin because this body is a holy body it yeah. is the body of christ it's no longer a body of sin and i think so many of us even miss that point that simple simple point you know in romans 7 calls it the body of sin or the body of death who shall deliver me from this body of death that was delivered, that's but so then when we are when when jesus comes in and we are born again it now becomes the body of christ and that's not just theoretical and and and, yeah. and you may I, I know a question just popped up in somebody's head. So if the flesh is not making me sin, what is making me sin? Your soul was made free to choose. Right. And as long as you agree with the word of God momentarily, you will not sin. But what if you believe that Romans 7 is talking about a Christian? If right. you believe a lie, right. that lie can have power in your life. Right, right. So, so it's very important that we be taught the truth because you can get saved today and never sin one time until Jesus comes. Yeah, and that's possible. And, and the Bible right. actually tells us about a whole set of young men, mm -hmm. 144,000 of them that will do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm praying, I'm like, Lord, you know, help us. You know, we do something with the young people called Passion and Fear to help us to, to raise up some Gentiles who are born again and not sin also. You know, I know it's not prophesied in the Bible. I'm not going to call myself the 144,000 because we are not. You know, the 144,000 is, is Hebrew young men. But, but um, when, as you were saying that about um, the fact that the young men, or that those who God has sealed, they will not sin one time. We too can have the testimony. Why? The word of God said unto him who is able to keep us from falling. And present us faultless so for the is. presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. Amen. <laughs> All right, but let me just pause right here because guess what? As we are saying, salvation came with God's grace or divine favor, influence, which is his enabling power to do his will. And sin no longer has dominion over the sons of God. If we sin, we sin by choice. You cannot say the devil made me do it, and the devil left you to hide behind it. And some of you just need to look him in his face and say, Guess what? I choose Christ. And my flesh didn't make me do it either. Right. If you are not saved, mm. you are under the bondage of sin. Mm. You are wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in the devil. Mm. And guess what? There's a law operating in you. Don't I'm, I'm, and I know you may go to church. You may even call yourself a Christian. Mm -hmm. But if you do not, if you have not had a genuine salvation experience where you mm -hmm. know that Christ stepped in your life mm -hmm. and did an awesome work where he converted you, you were converted, you had a nature change, mm -hmm. you are still bound by the devil. You are still held captive. And guess what? He is just wanting to abide time until he can just get you to, to, to die before accepting Christ. You need to pause right now and realize that you are a prisoner of Satan himself and begin to just call on the name of Jesus. Because he said you cannot come to him unless he draws you. Right. Nobody can just decide that I'm going to come to Christ. This satanic influence is so powerful, you cannot get up on a given day and decide by this, your own self that you're going to go. But the gospel of Jesus power, Christ power is the God. power in other words, God has visited you today and Amen. he said right Amen. now, by the yes, power Lord. of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you yes, can Lord. choose to be free. Amen. And I hear somebody saying, Lord, I want my body to be the temple of God. I want my body to be something that you can use for your glory. I want my body to only want you. Transform me, Lord. Right now, my body has a taste of sin. 
But I wanted to take this taste out of my flesh for sin. Right. So that my flesh will become your very temple or what the Bible calls mm -hmm. the tent. Hallelujah. A perfect sacrifice. I want my body to be that perfect sacrifice that I can offer up to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Save me, Lord. Fill my life with the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that makes me free from the law of sin and death. And I'd love to speak to a backslider here now because guess what? You probably um, in fornication or um, in adultery, you may, whatever it is, you may be on drugs or whatever. Guess what? You are a child of God and the Holy Spirit one time this same law made you free. You have entangled yourself again with the yoke of bondage. You have chosen and because you have transgressed, you are blaming everybody else. Well, the scripture said the way of the transgressor is hard. Your life is hard because you have chosen to transgress. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a word coming out from word vibes today. This word is more powerful than any force in the universe. This, mo this word, I, I mean, I just remember when I we used to be in the country and my father is a bishop and we had church and during crusade time we had people who were shocking up just getting up and saying guess what i'm um, going home and saying goodbye baby goodbye world me not stay no longer with you because the word of god is the power to lift you up into freedom yes and so whether you are not your backslider or whether or not you are not saved we are come to declare freedom to the captives today amen so you need to get married today. too yeah. Amen. So Lord, those marriages that you want to bring forth, let them come forth in Jesus' name. Those that need to be separated, let the separations happen peaceably in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And, and so we want to encourage you again. You, you can contact us by going on our Facebook page, Word Vibes, Bread for the Nations. And we'll also give you some further information as to how you can contact us. Thank you for watching. This is Word Vibes. All right. <laughs>